but now we want to be on the road with them. We want to touch them. We want to feel them. I, it's so sad that all the things that we, we just take, we realize now that we took for granted, you know what I mean? Like even being in like a small little underground club and uh, watching a live performance, like that's all going to be a wrap for, I think a very long time. I think so. And I feel, and let me tell you what it makes me feel really bad. I, I shouldn't say this out loud, but when promoters call and they send contracts and they say, we're going to do this, you know, no, you're not, but sure. Tell me where to be. I'll be there because everybody is, is operating in a space of wishful thinking. And it's like, right. know, I feel really bad for the people who create shows. I mean, a lot of people are just really taking a bath financially and have been totally ruined. So what's been motivating you? Like, how are you staying motivated? Well, motivation is usually not the hard part because I always know that God kind of knows what's up. And so he wouldn't put me in a situation that I couldn't be my best. In that season or whatever the moment is, I know that if I show up fully in my truth, I'll be fine. Um, but... There are some things that happen to us as a collective that can be disheartening and exhausting and um, confusing. And so what motivates me as, as a part of the collective is that we have a heritage and that we have a history uh, of things that we've contributed to society. And no matter what, we will always have that truth. And every once in a while, as an artist, I go back to whatever that is, whether it's jazz, uh, whatever type of art form it is that we created, whatever we gave in tap dancing, whatever we gave in whatever parts of the arts, I just go back to that to remind myself that there's craziness, it gets out of hand, it feels uncomfortable, but we have an identity and, and we can keep our heritage alive. So. That's part of my motivation is, is my heritage as, as a black girl. So with that being said, has it been challenging to create new music and to be creative during this time? Or has it been, are, are you more inspired? No, it, 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 the, the creation hasn't been, hasn't been challenging. I think, I think, I think when, when there's so much to pull from, creativity just happens naturally. Mm -hmm. What I found myself doing is looking at the creativity of, of men and women who came before me and sort of playing with that. I, I put out this uh, piece called Jazz for Black Joy. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I'll say, you know, when they were in a few hundred years ago and things weren't looking so bright, they were singing. And then another hundred years ago, they were singing. And 50 years ago, they were singing. What were the songs that they were creating? I look into copyright law and I see that the system was against them, but they kept singing. I look into the, the, the establishment at the time for the arts, and that was against them, but they kept singing. So I put together this piece called Jazz for Black Joy, where I just sang some of the jazz songs and pulled from the heritage of the trio and brought in my sisters and brothers who played the upright bass and the, and the drums with the brushes, and who studied jazz in college and just loved that. And I just created something like that just to give to the so I put that all over my social media. And the feedback was, you could tell people felt seated in their heritage when they looked at it. And that's all I wanted to say is, we create joy in the midst of the ugliest situations and we can find it now, it's who we are. Um, and jazz is one of the ways that I actually handled you know, that experience. Well, Chris, that, that's, I haven't heard anybody put it that way, but that makes a whole lot of sense. You know, we can, complain and sometimes when you put it up to the things that our ancestors have gone through it almost sounds like first world problems we're complaining about even, although they may really affect you negatively and be painful to you compared to what some of our our ancestors went through it, we, we probably should be a little grateful let's take a quick break and i want to talk more to you and i want to get more into your career and all the things that you have you got going on when we come back right here on fox soul Welcome back to Out Loud. We're here with singer and songwriter Chrisette Michelle. We're having a very fun, cute, delightful conversation about all things in her career. Now, we got to get into this. You've experienced a whole bunch of obstacles in your career, starting with the backlash 
you received after performing at Donald Trump's inaugural ball. How did that impact your life and your career? I know that had to be super tough for you because people were relentless with you, I felt. Yeah, definitely. Uh, people, people have their way. Um, and a lot of times in life in general, you really have to make sure that you're checked in. Otherwise, people will um, sort of be your inner voice. And once you begin to identify yourself with words that people put on you, um, it, it gets, it gets, it's a really tricky ground, you know? Um, so in that, in that particular time, um, I had to identify what I was hearing and then identify what God was saying or calling me. You know, I had to kind of like do both at the same time and kind of weigh them out. And I had to have grace on both sides. I had to have grace for the pain that I caused people and really acknowledge it, hear it, um, and, and, and take out the, find the understanding to understand it and, and to, to um, find the language for how it could be, how I could, how I can change and how I can be better. And then on the other side, I had to find grace for what God was calling me. You know what I mean? He had other words to call me. And I had to say, but God, they're saying this. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so it took some time of weighing both voices, uh, the voice of people and millions of people around the world. Yeah. Um, at a point where I was getting phone calls from different countries on my personal cell phone and death threats and all this kind of stuff, I was petrified to go outside. Um, so it wasn't just people's words in the comment section. A lot of times we talk about social media, um, but it was an energy, um, you know, anchored toward me, I had to balance that with God energy and, and decide um, where, I, where I fit in the middle of all of it. Uh, what, was, what was the most hurtful thing that people were saying about you? Or that, that, and I only ask this because a lot of times I just want people to understand. People think that celebrities are a Teflon. And oh, it shouldn't bother you because you're rich. It shouldn't bother you because you got the bag. It shouldn't bother you because you should know what you signed up for. Mm -hmm. And they tend to forget like how painful it could be. And I'm, without trying to make you relive, I'm not. But like, what were the things that really hurt you that people said about you? I've got to be honest with you, Claudia. I'm a ridiculously positive person. Mm -hmm. Like ridiculous because I think that everybody comes to the world for whatever the reason is mm -hmm. and they get their cup mm -hmm. and so I I can never be thrown out of the idea of what faith is I, I just I, I can't do that but what was the most painful thing was Christians who saw me stand next to a Christian artist and sing his song as his backup and his support, um, uh, push his his life and his career, etc., up, and and never say anything about me. It was as if I was separate from the love. So, you know, he came to sing a song and to tell everybody everything was gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. I was singing his song and saying, all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Those are the words to the song, that's what I said. And everybody heard him say it. Nobody heard me say it. So it wasn't just, Oh, you're a sellout. That that wasn't the part that hurt. It was, you know, because I'm an R and B singer, do I get to uplift and motivate people too? And it made me wonder for a split second if my positivity mattered um, as an R and B girl, or do only, only people who are deemed Christian get to be positive people? Wow. So. Because of that performance, you were dropped by your label, you dealt with depression, and suffered a miscarriage, and I'm so sorry to hear about that. I had no idea we were going to be talking about this tonight. Really? Um, but yeah, no. I, you know what, Chrisette, and I, 
I heard the things said about you. I didn't know you. You know what I mean? And, you know, as a black person in America, I feel the way most people feel like, well, we, we're all like, if you're supporting, if it appears you're supporting this man, you're off code. And I, and I, and I, I understand, I don't understand how you feel because I wasn't in your shoes, but I want to give people insight into who you really are. Right. Because. Well, then what we have to do is we have to make sure that we're saying what actually happened. And that's what I want you to, I want you to have no, the floor with I'm you. with you. I'm totally with you. I just didn't know. I would have kind of discussed it in advance. So we could kind of. Oh, I'm, back. I'm sorry. No it's, no, it's totally, I promise it's fine. I just didn't know. Yep. Whatever. Um, but so with all the things that kind of happened as a consequence, there was this, this thing that we call now, we call it um, cancel culture. Right. And. I've, you know, we can, it's probably easiest to kind of lump it all into that culture um, because the truth of what happened is kind of left up to blogs or, you know, different media sites that write things and say things happen that don't actually, haven't actually occurred. Mm -hmm. Some people say, oh, you know, this happened to you. And I'm like, wait a minute, that, that's not what actually happened. So in order to not, you know, go tit for tat, I'd say I was canceled, right? Mm -hmm. And with that happening, um, I think that it showed me that as, as, a, as a community, it's so important that we learn how to teach people who disappoint us. Right, so when somebody disappoints us as a community, oh, you know, you went over there, you shouldn't have. That's valid. It's, it, I, I think the issue is that people think that it's not valid for people to say, don't do that. Or it's not valid for people to, to show it in whatever emotion they show it. I'm not offended by emotions. I'm not, I'm not even offended hardly by name calling and all that stuff because I think that that's all the way that people let out their pain and I understand that people are human what I think we might want to change as a as a community is the communication aspect you're upset disappointed this person did the wrong thing now how do we how do we how do we have a conversation with that person how do we tell that person you know this would have been a better idea or maybe he did it like this or can I hear where, what you thought you were doing and and let's figure out a better way to do that so cancel culture, I think, is, is um, it wasn't the thing that hurt me the most. Like I said, the, the Christianity part of it is the part that hurt me the most. Yeah. But cancel culture, I think, is the, is, is the thing that, that doesn't have as much value as we think it is. Does because, like you said, people will say, oh, you're rich. We don't know if I'm rich or if I have $20. So right. we take away from people what we assume they have, but we never give them conversation that most of the times is all they need and then we could kind of coexist well thank you for that Chrisette um I I feel like people need to hear this from you that you are it's the, talking to you I mean we've only been talking for a couple of 20 minutes it's clear that you are someone that is open to criticism is open to have a conversation is open to hear how you may have hurt people and and willing to learn from that and I feel like people do need to stop with that because be offended, be angry, and be willing also to have a conversation, allow someone a chance to make it right, to explain, to talk yeah. about it. Let's I take a think people are petrified to talk. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, let's just like be honest. Like for instance, me and you, we don't know each other, right? Say if, like say if, just make it up. Say if I got so upset, I stormed off and like threw the computer across the room. That would be like expected, you know? Like, it wouldn't be like, I can't believe that happened. It'd be like, well, you know, it comes with the territory. I think people are so afraid just to say the thing. Yeah. Or be brave enough to have the conversation. What I did, I, I started a, a group called The Sistership. And it's at thesistership.org. And it's a safe space for, for women to kind of come together and just have conversations, etc. I opened up a yoga studio. And we have a lot of safe space conversations there. Um, I've just started creating different places 
where women can go and sort of have the conversations that are weird and awkward and uncomfortable. Because I think in our community, people just feel unsafe, especially yeah. in the comment section or the place where the conversations are happening. Well, we need that. And that's why I appreciate you coming on the show. We're going to take a quick break and be back with more with a very transparent and willing to talk for Set Michelle. Welcome back to Foxo Out Loud here at Hand Foxo. We're here with Chrisette Michelle and um, we're having a great conversation. Uh, Chrisette, I got to ask you one more thing about the inauguration. Do you regret it now or do, would you do it all over again or do you regret performing at the inauguration? I definitely wouldn't do it again. Um, I think that I learned that where you, just because you want to do something positive and that's the thing is like, no one has any idea what I did there. That's the part that's the most frustrating is like, we're, we were, we we're trying to make people feel better. But what I learned is no matter what your message is, if it's on the wrong stage, in the wrong company, and with the wrong energy, it's not a good message. Even if you're saying, hug yourself. Even if you're saying, love yourself. If you're saying it, from the depths of hell, then it's not a good message. And, and that's what I learned. That was a hard message to learn because growing up Christian, they say, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, here's all the world. Right. Well, yeah, everyone wants to know how much money you got for that performance. Was it nice? Was it a nice bag? I, I hate to be on your business, but it's kind of my job. What? Yeah, I see. Um, no, it, it was it definitely. I think Wendy Williams quoted that I made seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, and other people were saying things like um, her tours got canceled and she was dropped from a label and all this kind of stuff. Like I was still on tour after um, I wasn't no. signed to a label, so there was no label for me to be dropped from. I was wow. Um, and it wasn't a big check. I had sang for uh, President Barack Obama a couple of times before that. Um, uh, what do you call it? Government and uh, army and, and, and military events, you don't do for, for, for money. You do for you know, your country and for the people that are, that are a part of your country. I've been to Iraq. You don't, you don't get paid big money for that. Um, well, I'm gonna let I'm gonna just move on from that now because I want to talk about what you have going on now. You recently released your single "Wait." What can mm -hmm. you hear? We have a clip. Let's play a clip of that. Let's take a listen. Wait. No denying you've got an amazing voice. So what do you want your fans to take away from that song? You know, I wrote that song uh, when I filed for divorce. Uh, right after I filed, um, I got that song. It was last last year, uh, April. And I just felt the Holy Spirit, like, lay it on me. Like, stay calm. I know you don't know what's next. I know you can't see the other side of this. I know you're uncomfortable. You just wait. If you wait a little, a little while, I'll meet you on the other side. And so then quarantine happens a year later. I said, you and I, I, I wasn't ready to, but when I did, I finally released it. And um, it just felt like the right time. So lately I've just been kind of releasing myself, not really doing it in hopes that somebody likes it or somebody thinks it's special. Kind of always been that way. Um, but when you get in front of a lot of people, people think you want to be in front of a lot of people. For some reason, my life has brought me to the point of being seen, um, but I haven't changed. Um, that song sounds just like Best of Me from my very first album. Uh, I'm not looking for accolades, I'm just an artist. Beautiful love. Well, my last question, Chrisette. I hope it's a good one, Claudia. Huh? What do you say? I hope it's a good one, and a happy one. Oh yeah, no, we always end up on a, on a high note. I gotta do the difficult stuff because I'd I be, you know, they'd say I was fake. I'd get canceled for not doing my job. So if you- If you can, didn't ask me about the 
that you would get canceled? If I what? You you would get canceled for that? No, no. Well, no, not about that. But I mean, I think that's it's an important thing, and I feel like I've never heard you be able to explain it. I've never I've never heard you be able to really give it the answer that I think it deserved. I've never been able to hear that. And wow. I want this to be a real interview where you we both can leave like, wow, okay, I got something off my chest, and then I learned something about her. You know. All right. So then and, before you leave me, before you leave me. Is there anything else to that I didn't clarify? Because I feel like I've said it a thousand times. And you know how that is being in media. You feel like you said something a lot. Right. No, I think I, I get it. You were doing it for a different purpose. You were going with a, a, a Christian artist. You wanted a, a message to be out there. And it, it came from a place of love. And the platform may have not been the right thing. It wasn't well, well received. But your, your intent was totally right in the right place. That's what I took from what you said. Okay. So that's that. Good? Okay. Okay, good. Because no, I'm always like, did I not? And I'm not, but I didn't hear it. I understand. What do you want people to know about you that they don't know? You know what the truth is, is I think they'll find out in time and I'm not in a rush to, to, to push anything on anybody. I feel like if you're, if you're beautiful, people will figure it out in time. You know what I mean? Um, so right now I want people to go to the sistership.org. Um, I want people to join in the conversation there. It's a crap ton of love. It's super corny. There's di diamonds and gemstones everywhere, but you know it's a part of who I am. So the sistership.org. If you're looking to have real conversation, talk through things, figure your life out, and and be loved on by a group of women, come through. So, I love it. Well, thank you, Chrisette, for your transparency uh, and, and for answering something you're probably sick and tired of answering. I I'll, I'll never. No, ask. You know, I just want to know if I said it. That was the first time I've ever asked anybody, what did you hear? Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, okay, I, okay, I did say it. So thank I you. I want to tell that. all the little mean old people online to stop doing this. Let people, allow people to make mistakes, allow people to evolve, allow people to explain what they were thinking at the time because it doesn't necessarily, didn't really necessarily go down the way you may have thought. And that happens a lot. I want to yeah. thank you so much for coming on the show, Chrisette Michelle. I, I want everyone to go support your song, Weights, and all the other things you have going on. I also want to thank Big Tigger and once again, Chrisette Michelle for staring, sharing their stories with us tonight. Thank you so much for watching us on the Fox Soul TV mobile app and stay tuned for our, a new Fox show, Kings with Cosign. See you tomorrow right back here on Fox Soul. Y'all have a great night.